Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge Primary Checkpoint for Mathematics Paper 1, October 2023. This is the second part of a two-part video where I'll be covering questions 16 to 31 of this paper. Let's start. Question 16. Baby Gabriella's length is measured every two months. Here's a line graph showing her length. A. She is 78 centimeters long when she is 12 months old. Plot this information and complete the line graph. So 78 is 4 fifths of the way between 70 and 80. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4 times in the length, which is the height of the graph. And we just draw the line like that. And this is over here since the age is 12. B. Drawing around the age range where baby Gabriella grew the most. That's simply going to be the one where she has the highest increase or which means the gradient is the highest and you can see is that this one has the highest gradient and it's 50 to 58 so that's 8 centimeters in just two months which is zero to two months that's higher than any of the others that's the answer question 17 carlos draws the shape made of squares he shades part of the shape carlos says 50 percent of the shape is shaded Take to show if Carlos is correct, yes or no, explain how you know. Well, the answer is actually no. Just because if we count the rows of four squares, we can see that this shape is made of five different rectangles, each containing 20 squares each. So we have columns of four, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten columns of four. That's simply 40 squares, and 40 squares are shaded. And the total is we have 5 times 4 for each rectangle and there are 5 different rectangles so 5 times 4 times 5 which is 100. And 40 by 100 is not equal to 50% since this is actually 40% because to convert from fraction to percentage we just multiply by 100. That's our answer. Question 18, here's part of a sequence. It continues in the same way as given here. Write the next few numbers in the sequence. All right, the sequence is 1.06, 1.04, 1.02, and we have to write the next two. We can see that every term involves subtracting 0.02 from the previous term. So if we do that again, we get 1.00 and 0.98 for the next two terms. Question 19, here's a recipe for making strawberry milkshake. The ingredients and method are given here. Ken uses the recipe to make strawberry milkshakes for his friends. He has 56 strawberries, 1.5 liters milk, and 20 ice cubes. Calculate the maximum number of strawberry milkshakes Kent would make using his ingredients. Show you're working. So the maximum number, if he had unlimited milk and ice cubes, that would be determined by strawberries. So we get 56 by 8, which is 7 milkshakes, which he could possibly make using the boundary of strawberries, not the boundary of milk. 1.5 liters is going to be 1500 ml or milliliters. And now the milk, we divide by the amount per person and that will be 6 milkshakes. Now 20 ice cubes, we divide by the amount per person which is 2, that's 10 milkshakes. And I have these 3 which is the lowest it's 6. Why do we want the lowest if we have the maximum number which we need to find? That's because if we have only 6 milkshakes possible to make using the amount of milk we have, we obviously cannot make 7 milkshakes since there's not enough milk. So this is the smallest value and that's why we have 6 milkshakes as the answer. Question 20. Here are 3 digit cards. Use all 3 to make the largest possible answer. Dash times dash minus dash. Alright, so we need to make this or this as large as possible. So if we make this one as large as possible, then we'll see what we get here. So if this is large as possible, seven, then five minus two, then this will become 21. Because five minus two is three, seven times three is 21. Now if you put five here, that means you could put seven minus two for the largest possible. Five times five is 25, which is greater than 21. So 25 is the largest possible answer. So 25 is the largest possible answer. And we are writing this here as 5 times 7 minus 2. You can try any other number combinations, it still won't be this large. Question 21. 
He had two empty bottles. Naomi pours water with a volume of 600 ml into bottle A. It's now half full. Naomi then pours half the water in bottle A into bottle B. Bottle B is now half full. Why the capacity of both bottles? So bottle A is half full with 600 ml in it. So capacity of bottle A is 600 times 2 to make it full. So that's 1200 ml. Now for bottle B. She pours half the water in bottle A into bottle B and that makes it half full. So 600 divided by 2 is going to be half full. Now 600 divided by 2. How do you make this into full water bottle? That's going to be if you multiply it by 2. So that's 600 ml. That'll be our answer. Question 22. A bag contains red, white and black beads only. There are 8 in the bag altogether. Mike picks one bead from the bag at random. There's an even chance of picking a black bead. First, we notice that that's even. That means black is going to be a 50-50 or 0 0.5. There's a greater chance of picking a red bead than a white bead. So that means the probability of picking a red bead is going to be greater than white. Complete the table about Mike's beads. Well, since black is 0 0.5 or a 50-50 chance of getting black or not, that means we have to divide 8 by 2 to get the number of black beads, which is 4. Now, the probability of getting red is greater than the probability of getting white, which means it's either going to be 4-0 or 3-1 with the remaining 4 beads in the bag since they're 8 together. Therefore, since you cannot have 0 white beads because it contains all 3 colors, we have to have the numbers as 3 and 1. That will be the answer. Question 23. Write a number in the box to complete the statement. Hash times 5 equals 3 by 4. Let's say this number is x. x times 5 equals 34. That means we divide by 5 on both sides. And by the way, this is 5. So 3 by 4 divided by 5. And that means x equals 3 by 20. So this is our answer. Question 24. Two identical circles are cut in half. The four pieces are arranged to make a new shape of width. 12 centimeters. Write the height of the new shape. Well, 12 centimeters is equal to the length of two diameters of the circle. So the length of one diameter is going to be equal to 12 by 2, which is 6 centimeters. And the length of a radius is going to be 6 by 2 because radius is half a diameter, which is 3 centimeters. Now, the height of the shape is going to be equal to a radius plus a radius plus a radius three times of a radius and therefore the height is going to be equal to three times three which is nine centimeters that's the answer question 25 question 25 point a b and c are plotted on the coordinate grid a write the coordinates of the middle point on the line joining A and B. So first to find the coordinates, the simplest way is to draw the line like this. Now let's see what's the displacement from B to A. So this will be two units right since this is one unit. So there's two units right and then six units up since this is one unit. So six units up. And the midpoint will be half of this displacement and half of this displacement. So 2 by 2 and 6 by 2. So that's 1 unit right and 3 units up, which is 2 comma 1. That's the answer. B, A, B, C, D is a square. Write the coordinates of point D. Alright, so let's join the point C to this B. So when we have one more point D somewhere around here, we'll get a square. What are the lengths of these sides? So as I said, the displacement is 2 units right and 6 units upwards. So that means the displacement over here is going to be 2 units down, 6 units right. And then the displacement from D to C, so D is somewhere over here and C is here. So the displacement from that is going to be 2 units left and 6 units down. So that means D has to be over here because if we now calculate, it'll be two units left and six units down and that is correct. Or in other words, two units right, six units up to go to D from C. And if you connect it, 
they'll intersect at right angles or in other words they are perpendicular to each other so this will be a square the coordinates of d are minus 3 comma 6. that's the answer question 26 lily has four digit cards lily uses all the cards to make a three digit number that's divisible by six write all the different numbers lily could make all right so if the number is divisible by six that means it has to be divisible by three and two so if it's divisible by two the last digit has to be even one of these so let's say the last digit is four that means there's a possibility that the other two digits in front of it could be three and five or it could be five and three two different orders so the digits have to add up to a multiple of three in this case 354 and 534 they both add up to 12 which is a multiple of three therefore they are divisible by three and there's actually another few numbers because when you have six as the last digit then the other two numbers also have to add up to a multiple of three so it's going to be four and five there's no other possibility so it's 456 and 546 in two different orders these two have digits that add up to 15 and it's a multiple of three therefore they are divisible by three and they're even so therefore divisible by six there are two more options which satisfy these conditions and they are 564 and 654. so these two numbers have digits that add up to 15 and since 15 is divisible by 3 or 15 by 3 is 5 which is an integer we can say that this whole thing is divisible by 3 and since both are even numbers they end in a 4 so they are divisible by both 2 and 3 therefore divisible by 6 and yes they are three digit numbers therefore these two also count in all the numbers these two have digits that add up to 12 and these two also have digits that add up to 15 so they are also divisible by 6 since they are all even numbers Therefore, these are only answers. You have to write all of these to get the two marks. Let's go to question 27. You rearrange four identical right angle triangles to make a square. Calculate the area of the shaded square. So if these four triangles are identical, that means this is 2 centimeters, this is 4 centimeters, and then like this for the other two as well. So that means the full side length of the square is 6 centimeters so the area of the shaded square is going to be the area of the hued square minus the area of the four triangles which are all the same or identical so we can write the area is going to be equal to six squared which is the area of the large square subtracted by minus the four times of one triangle's area since if we take one triangle's area example that one that'll be half times base times height which is half times two times four and in this case multiplying by four because there are four different triangles like this which are all identical so we can subtract four times of this area and that'll simply be 36 minus 16 which is 20 centimeters squared that's our answer question 28 by a single digit in each box to complete the statement Six tens plus three hundred eight hundreds plus forty seven thousands equals dash. So six tens, which means there is six in the tens place. Three hundred eight hundreds means that there is three hundred eight times the hundreds place, which is zero point zero one. And three hundred eight times zero point zero one is three point zero eight. So we can write this down first. What am I saying first? because this is not our final values. We have to add 47,000s as well. And 47,000s is going to be 47 times 0 0.001, since 47 times 1,000. That's 0 0.047. Now, if we add 0 0.047 to this, we will get 63.127. And that's why we have to change these digits over here. And that'll be our answer. Going to question 29. A chef wants to buy a large amount of flour. The six bags of flour he could buy are shown in this scatter graph. They're labeled A to F. A, write the letter of the bag of flour that has the lowest price for each kilogram. Well, that's definitely going to be bag F, 
since bag F has an extremely high mass value, although it's not given, but we know it's extremely high since they're at the end of the axis. But then the price value is only one unit for a large amount of mass. So lowest price for each kilogram is definitely F. B, write the letters of two bags of flour where the price for each kilogram is the same. So indirectly, it's asking if we draw a line from the origin through one of the bags of flour, that means does this line intersect with another bag? Because then they have the same price for each kilogram. And in this case, C and D are on this line and therefore they both have the same price per kilogram. So we can write C comma D. If you want to think of it another way, we can say this is three units of mass and this is three units of money. Or we can just say that it's dollars three or three dollars. And this will be six dollars if there's three. And that means this will be six units of mass for D. So three by three is equal to six by six, which is one dollar per kg, right? In this case, therefore, these two will have the same price per kilogram. Of course, we have assumed that this is $3. This could be something like 3 units is equal to $6, or this could be 2, this could be 3. Therefore, there is many different ways. But the ratio is still going to be the same. That's why we have our answer. Question 30. Here's a grid with two symbols. Each symbol represents a whole number. The total of each column and two of the rows are shown. Complete the missing row total. So I'll show you a neat trick to do this question or any kind of question like this which usually comes in contest math and without even calculating the value of the circle or triangle. So if we add all three columns, that's the same thing as adding all three rows, right? So adding all three columns is the same thing as adding these values here. So 13 plus 14 plus 13. That's going to be equal to the same thing as adding these row totals here. 12 plus 13 plus another value x. And this x value is this value unknown. So that means x is going to be equal to when we do 13 plus 14 plus 13, subtract 13 and subtract 12, we get 15. So this is the value. That's our answer. Question 31. Safia chooses a number with three digits. She multiplies a number by 100. The answer also has three digits. Write a number Safia could choose. This means that the number of digits hasn't changed, but the place value has changed. How is this possible? Of course, we have to include decimals. So let's say we have a number in decimal 2.5. Multiplying by 100, we get 250. But this is three digits, but then this is only two. So let's just add one more digit, let's just say 3. It doesn't really matter what these digits are, it's just a value with one digit before the decimal place and two digits after. And that's actually our answer because when you multiply by 100, we will get 253. The number of digits hasn't changed, only the place value has changed. So the number has three digits, the answer also has three digits when multiplied by 100. So in this case, I'm writing 2.53. And yes, since it's multiplied by 100, we get 253. Therefore, it's a correct answer. But of course, you can write any number all the way from 1.01 to 9.99. As long as the last digit is not 0, the first digit is not 0. Of course, the first digit can't be 0 if it's in between the two, but the last digit should not be 0. Otherwise, the first number will simply have two digits. 0 does not count as a digit at the end. So about 2.50, they can just cancel this out. It'll be 2.5 with only two digits. That's our answer. And with that, I come to the end of our video. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family, and comment on how you think this video was. With that, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.